Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to another live watch-along stream here as the Boston Celtics are taking on the Milwaukee Bucks tonight. Sorry for a little bit of a delayed start here. I had to get some things set up before we get ready to go. But we are here. We are ready for this live watch-along. Celtics already have the first seed wrapped up like we mentioned. The Milwaukee Bucks obviously have the second seed locked up. But the Celtics will have no Al Horford and no Kristaps Porzingis tonight. That means the Celtics want to experiment. They want to see how guys like Luke Cornett, see how guys like Xavier Tillman could work against guys like Giannis Antetokounmpo, like guys like Brooke Lopez. And it's going to be another game for experimenting for the Boston Celtics. I'm very excited to watch. I'm very excited to see what happens tonight. On the offensive side, I expect them to be shooting a bunch of threes as guys like Tatum, Holiday, Brown, Derek White, they're all available. Sam Hauser, Peyton Pritchard, they're ready to play. And the Celtics want to bounce back tonight on uh, TNT as the last time that they played the Milwaukee Bucks, they got embarrassed. Now, obviously, they came off a game where they were uh, playing in versus Minnesota, and they had a deep overtime game versus them, then put in a back-to-back -back versus Milwaukee, and that's understandable. But this means that the Celtics are going to have a tough matchup against this Bucks squad, and a team that, you know, had known Giannis Antetokounmpo when they last matched up in Boston. Now they are ready to go. It's going to be an exciting one. I'm very excited. Let me know what you guys think down below, what you guys want to see, what you guys are looking forward for in tonight's matchup. If you guys did not see, I posted the Discord link down below in the description as well in the comment section. So if you want to feel free and want to join that as well. That is also something for you. I'm going to plug my phone in here real quick and we'll get to some of the comments down below. See what people have to say about the stream so far. Get some people's takes. T Snizzle is here. What is up, T Snizzle? How we doing tonight? Glad you can make it to another stream tonight. You said for in order for us to win without Poison Gus and Al, we need our best players to our bet. We need best rebounding and we need to hit our threes and to lock up Giannis. That's going to be a big task for the Boston Celtics, but I'm feeling confident in our squad tonight. I think we're going to be able to do it. I'm going to get the stream pulled up on my phone so I can read the comments a little bit better too. Jeff is here. What's up, Jeff? Thank you for tuning into the last couple of streams. I've noticed I've seen you chatting up in here. Welcome back. How are you doing tonight? As we gear up for this big game. Jimmy J is here as well. What's up, Jimmy J? How you doing tonight? What's up, bro? My take is let the Bucks win. You feel you have a feeling you want to give the Bucks the win here. I'd like to hear why you want to do that. I know that obviously give them a little bit of momentum, but they made a new switch up in the starting lineup, putting Patrick Beverly instead of Malik Beasley. Let's see how that things shake up. But Doc Rivers, guy was brought in to stop the losses for this Milwaukee Bucks squad, has more losses than Adrian Griffin with this team. So a little crazy there with that for a nice little stat. Jeff says going to be a lot of bombs tonight, you think? Exactly. I think it's going to be a lot of shooting tonight for the Boston Celtic. And you said we want the Bucks to stay two or three seed. Yeah, I mean, you, do you think they have the possibility of falling down below to the fourth or the fifth seed? I, I mean, I know that the Eastern Conference is very close at this moment. I know that the Bucks, the Cavs, the Knicks... The Magic, I know that they're all very, very close right now. So, yeah, with the last couple of days, maybe them winning this game would be best for the Boston Celtics so they can secure that. Dwayne is here as well. What's up, Dwayne? How we doing? He says, what's up, gang? Hopefully we can take these guys down. That's what I'm saying. I'm hoping for a big-time win here for our Celtics. T. Snizzle says they will have to play the Heat or the Sixers. That will not be good, so too, not too mad if we lose. Yeah. I think that regardless, we're gonna, us and the Bucks are going to have to play the, the Heat or the Sixers in the first round, which is going to be a tough matchup. You just want us to show nothing? Okay. We need to be H. I don't know what you meant to say there, Dwayne. Oh, got some more chats. No, because if we win, they will stay the two seed and have to play Heater Sixers. That's just smart. Okay, so you want them to fall so that they don't have to play them? It would be nice to keep them losing, but kind of meaningless like games for us. Yeah, exactly. This isn't like we don't necessarily need a win. We don't necessarily need a loss. That's why if we do lose this game to the Bucks, nothing to overreact, nothing to freak out about. But we all know the media is going to be freaking out about it, going after it. 
We just need to come out and cross these guys. We have Holiday playing. Hopefully, is the revenge game for him. Exactly. We saw him ball out in his first game versus the Bucks. So hopefully, this one he can be solid as well. Luckily for us tonight, since the game is not on NBC, is on TNT. It's starting pretty soon. It's actually starting right about now. So we're gonna get the volume come in here. Sorry, that was a little bit loud. I know for everybody. We got the stream going. Got a little bit of a like spike before the video. Before the stream starts, hit that like button if you enjoy the Boston Celtics stream. If you want to get as many Celtics fans in here as possible, so we can have a good time hanging out here i'm gonna get the scoreboard here up as well let me get the window capture here set up why is it not working okay there we go sorry no commentary at the moment as we fix this Xavier Tillman with a three. Let's go. Big points for the Boston Celtics after a little bit of a shaky start. Here we go. Now that we got that there. Make that a little bit bigger for everybody. Put that down there. And then here we go. Now we got everything going. Sorry about that. Sorry that took a little bit. Here we go. The game has started. 3-2. Giannis going to the rack. Guarded by Drew Holiday. Tries to fight through. Good defense from the Celtics here. The Celtics are running Xavier Tillman in the starting lineup with no Al Horford and no Chris Dobbs pushing this tonight, like I mentioned. Drew Holiday, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Derek White, and Xavier Tillman for the starting five. Some good defense from the Celtics here. Book roll. Book. Brooke Lopez, three as he makes it. Come on. Derek White bringing the ball up the court here. Nice pass down low to Jalen Brown. Kick out to Tatum for three. Misses the three. Rebound by Lopez. Pass up to Patrick Beverly here who's taking the ball up. Giannis going to go fake. Pass up to Beverly for three. Misses. Rebound. Trading rebounds back and forth. Good ball moving from the Celtics. Nice down low pass to Drew Holiday. Let's go. Let's go. Get to that basket. Let's get this offense going early, ladies and gentlemen. Some good defense here. Tillman on Giannis. Getting to see that kind of matchup. Brook Lopez with another three as he makes it. Wow. Brook Lopez just... Stretching it out tonight for pause for the Milwaukee Bucks. Six points, two for three from the field. Drew Holiday, though, mid range, misses, rebound to Chris Middleton. Down low, Giannis makes it. No one down low to stop him. Get some good defense here. Come on, turn into good offense. Good ball movement. Derek White, three. Misses. No one able to get the rebound. Giannis tips it. Pass out to Holiday. Back out to Lopez for three. No, someone needs to step up on Brooke Lopez. He's made three threes. Come on. Step up. Step up, step up, step up. Tatum trying to get by the Tillman screen. Going to go for a mid-range shot off the front rim. T Joe, call a timeout. Joe, call a timeout. Let's look at the chat here. Let's see what everybody's screaming about. Everybody's here. Jimmy J Jimmy J's talking about some playoffs. Tough round one, but I prefer Knicks, Cavs, or Magic round two. That's who I would rather as well. 
I don't want to play Miami or them. Loose ball turnover by the Bucks there. Kind of still look like the Bucks deal, but they've been trash. Yeah, they haven't been the greatest this year. I thought they'd be more competent with the Celtics here. I thought it would be the two top teams and everybody else at the bottom. Jalen Brown going to the rack, though. Mid-range floater and air balls. Magic Bulls, yes. Magic are very good defensively, not the greatest offensively, so I'd like to play them as I try to go down low to Giannis and are unsuccessful down low. The Bulls are my preferred matchup as well, Jimmy J. I think we play against the best against them and match up the best against them as well. Celtics, very cold on offense tonight so far. Tatum pass down low to Tillman, who goes for a layup and gets blocked. But Brown gets the steal, pass to Tatum. Tatum for three, makes it. All right. George Lopez can't miss. We need better D on him. That's just my opinion. That's my nickname, by the way. George Lopez. That's hilarious. But, yes, we do need to guard Brooke Lopez. He's too much of a deep threat tonight for the Celtics. Come on. Beverly makes a basket. They're just scoring all over us on the defense, on offense, from three-point range, at the rack, and the Celtics not hitting that many shots. Holiday for three. All right, Holiday, let's go. Get us back in here. Get us back in here. Big time three. Charles Miller's here as well. Got here late. Let's see a win. We will see our new man see that. Will our new man see the court? Namus, I believe, is down in the G League for the championship tonight, so I do not think he'll be there. But the Bucs are just hitting everything. Another three from Brook Lopez. Who is guarding him, says T-Snizzle. That's what I'm saying, man. That's what I'm saying. I'm a little honey. You guys need some size in there. Yeah, we need some size. Let's go. Middleton on Tatum. Going to get the strip a little bit. Now back out to White. Back to Tatum. Six minutes in the almost halfway through the first. Celtics only have 11 points. Blocked at the rim. The Bucs are just controlling that aspect. Giannis back out to Lillard. Lillard trailing to Middleton into the corner. Beverly back out to Middleton from the corner three. Top, we're down 10. Oh, my God. Middleton's now hitting threes. Bad sign for Giannis that they call traveling tonight. I hope they are. I hope they're calling the travels. We haven't seen no calls on that yet. Drew Holiday misses a free throw, a three off the front rim. Jimmy's here. Landon's here. What's up, Landon? What's up, T Snizzles? They make another three. Oh my God. Damian Lillard. It's just raining threes here in Milwaukee. And not for the Celtics. Yeah, T Snizzle. Dude can't miss. None of them can miss from three point range tonight. Yeah, this is what it's reminding me of, too, when we got blown up by 50. That's what I was talking about. We can't have that type of night on TNT again. That's why I feel like the Jays are playing. Tillman for three. Misses it. Unable to get the rebound as it rolls out and out of Holiday's hands. Lillard now attacking. Middleton lob. Oh my god. <sighs> Not that we need this win, but I just don't want to get blown out. They're on an 11 0 run in the last minute, and I don't want to just hear this banter from the Bucks fans. Drew Holiday out to Tillman. Tillman back to Holiday. Holiday back out to Brown. Brown for three. Misses. Good rebound by Holiday, but no. Nah. Here we go. Finally a timeout. Finally, we're taking a timeout here. But yeah, this has been back and forth. We've had 37 people in the chat here. What's up, everybody? How have we been doing? Eight current people here. If you guys are enjoying the stream, if you guys are having fun, we're hitting a commercial break. Obviously, Celtics offensively have not been great at all, and the Bucks offensively have been clicking. Brooke Lopez cannot miss. Chris Middleton's hit threes. Dames hit threes. They're getting steals. They're getting blocks. And the Celtics just can't score at any way. The threes aren't falling. Mid-ranges aren't falling. They're going to the basket. They're getting blocked on the defensive side. They're just letting up shots from Book Lopez. They're letting him step into them. Just not a good look here for the Boston Celtics at this very moment. Obviously, again, we don't need this win. There's no KP. There's no Al Horford. We're experimenting things with having Xavier Tillman being in the starting lineup. This game means nothing to the Boston Celtics. But if they get blown out on national television again on TNT, the national media is just going to be out crazy, and they're just going to be, you know, 
rambling and saying, oh, the Celtics can't beat the Bucks. They had Jason Tatum. They had Jalen Brown. Just because there was no Chris Dabbs, Porzingis, yada, yada, yada. ESPN's going to have a field day with this. And I just don't want to deal with that part of the aspect. If we lose this game, at least let it be a close one. Let it be a three-point game. Let it be a five-point game. Jimmy J was saying, let's give them this win. If we do give them this win, let's make it a close game. But if not, I want to see some fight. I want to see some tenacity come out of this. But like we mentioned, the last couple games, the Celtics have started very cold in the first quarter. But they've woken up coming out of that first time out so out of this time out let's get a little bit of jazz going let's get some pump up let's get some energy let's spike it up here and let's get the gas pedal pumping on offense and defense let's go and actually tr feel like we want to try and win this game t snizzle says yeah we're not winning bro without keep kp yeah no yeah it's looking tough no one can really stop Giannis down low he's getting a lot of boards and Realistically, they're just hitting a bunch of threes. Like, Brooke Lopez having three or four threes in the first quarter. Something that you could not really... You could see happen, but not something that, you know, banking on or guaranteeing. So, that's just something that we have to try to capitalize and stopping and trying to make at least hinder. Dwayne says, we got to stop jacking up the threes, man, against this team. Well, that's the thing. With no KP and no Al, you can't really go down low to score on Giannis Antetokounmpo and Brooke. So, the three-pointer is going to be our game tonight. And so far, it's not been working. Rob T, or Rob version 1's here. What's up, Rob? How we doing? How we doing? Says this is about a terrible start that we can have. Just like the last game in Boston. This game I wanted us to win. Can't let the Bucks gain too much confidence. Too many threes we aren't guarding. Exactly, that's the thing. We're not stepping up on the three-point range. We're not helping out down low. They're getting those rebounds over us. Just tough for the Boston Celtics here. We got to get into a little bit of a rhythm here. We got to start picking the pace up. We got 14 viewers in here. So as a commercial break, we're going to call for a like spike. If you're new here to the stream, if you have not hit that like button, make sure to hit that like button so we get as many Boston Celtics fans in here as possible. We want to hype everybody up, get everybody pumped up for this game as much as I am. Yes, the Celtics are down here. Come out of this timeout. Let's catch some fire. Let's see some big plays out of some of our bench guys tonight. And let's rejuvenate the juice here in Boston. Like Rob says, we can't. Let them gain too much confidence. We can't let them get comfortable in this. Let's spike some things up. Let's bring out those guys. I want to see some O'Shea Brissett, maybe. Let's spark some things up here. Here we go. Going to put the volume back on. The game is back. And here we go. The scoreboard is here as well. 14 people, though. Again, appreciate everybody tuning in. Let us know your thoughts down below in the comment section on what you guys th are thinking. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Th three from Cornette. Yes, sir. Luke Cornette hit a three. We were talking about this the other day. There we go. Dwayne was talking about it. T. Snizzle. Yes. Yes, we were talking about this the other day. How Luke Cornette's a guy that can hit threes. It's been in his game. We talked about how in New York he has done it before, but... He just did it for the Boston Celtics, and we haven't seen that at all this season. Been a paint presence, been a rim protector, rebounder. Hasn't been part of his game. Love to see it. Get into that rhythm, Luke. Here we go. Big time steal. Good pass from Peyton Pitchard. Here goes Jalen Brown trying to get to the rack. Good pass out, JB. Back to Luke. Back out to JB. JB. Now back at around the, the half court mark. Going into the basket. Righty layup. Misses. Luke Cornett tries to fight for the rebound. Is unsuccessful in picking it up. But here come the Bucks, Bringing it down the court here. Going down low on Sam Hauser. Bobby Portis. Backdoor cut pass to Patrick Beverly. Who's wide open. What's going on? Step up. Missed three, bad rebound. Patrick Beverly showing more fight than the Boston Celtics have. And the Bucks are really great from offense right now. Eleven for thirteen, while the Celtics are five from eighteen. So Portis misses. Cornette the rebound. There we go. Derek White for three. Yes, sir. All right, we we'll get this offense going. Derek White the hot hand. Let's keep it going. Keep it up from those last couple games, my guy. If we are going to play with fire and effort, might as well just make, just make.
play a full bench lineup. This start is embarrassing. I hope Missoula makes adjustments. Glad to see Luke hit a three after a long time. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I think if it doesn't go the well that, that way that the Celtics want to see third, fourth quarter, we're going to see a big bench game like we did last time we played on TNT, which is what I'm fearing because I don't want the f- me, like casual fans to be talking badly about the uh, Boston Celtics and saying, oh, the Bucks can beat them, yada, yada, yada. But the Celtics just getting some bad turnovers. Jalen Brown just got one there. Celtics going to take another timeout here. So like I mentioned, some not great things for the Boston Celtics here. Not the, the Bucks are just making basically every single shot. They have six threes. Brooke Lopez has at least three or four of them just killing the Boston Celtics from that aspect. Defensively, they're able to out-rebound us with having Giannis Antetokounmpo and having uh, Brooke Lopez with no Al Horford and Kristaps Porzingis for the Boston Celtics. And like I mentioned, their threes are going in. Luke Cornett hit a three, which was nice for the Boston Celtics. Derek White hit a three for the Boston Celtics, getting some spark on the offense back here. But we haven't been able to score at the rim at all, basically, this entire game. It's either getting blocked, we're getting a little flustered and turning the ball over like we just saw with Jalen Brown. We need to get a little bit more accustomed at feeling that mid-range out, feeling out the paint, and, you know, attacking the rim a little bit, not with pressure, but not as anxiously uh, pressuring the rim and, you know, slowing it down maybe a little bit as we gear up for the rest of this second half, uh, second quarter and getting into the second half. Now, is this something that I want to be seeing right now? No, but am I worried? Am I pissed off? Not really. We can lose this game. It's A-OK. I just don't want to get blown out. I just don't want to get blown out. Just make it a close game. Let's keep the fight in us. Let's bring it back a little bit. Let's just keep it bouncing back and forth. And if we lose by three, five points, it's totally OK. You know what I mean? We have the first seed wrapped up. Like you guys were mentioning in the comments, the Bucks, if they get this win, they, I believe, still stay in the second seed. But who knows? I don't know who you guys want to see the Bucks play, but I really want to see the Milwaukee Bucks play the, Phil- the Miami Heat because I think that they're the best matchup versus them, and I think that he can beat them. And then if not, then I think the Sixers are another great matchup. But I, I'd love to see the Bucks in the same area as us playing one of those play-in teams because if the Celtics don't lose to one of those play-in teams, I could very well easily see the Milwaukee Bucks falling to one of them. And even if the Bucks match up against a team like the Pacers in the sixth matchup or if the Pacers fall into the plan, that's a bad matchup for the Bucks as well. Realistically, I don't know who the Bucks want to play in a playoff matchup. Celtics, though, I'm feeling confident. Everybody, top to bottom, one through eight. I mean, there are some worries here and there, but I 80-90% feel confident going against most of our competition in the Eastern Conference. I feel like the Bucks could give us problems on a healthy day. Yeah, the Knicks could give us some issues. Maybe the Miami Heat as well. But besides that, I think the Celtics would have a pretty easy job in coasting through the Eastern Conference. And if we only have to match up against one of those teams, possibly even two, then I think we're going to luck out and have a deep playoff run here. But let me know what you guys think. I'd love to play... You know, the Bulls in the first round, then maybe a nice Cleveland in the second round. If they snuck a playoff one in the 4-5 matchup, that'd be nice. Or maybe an Orlando in that spot. And then who knows, maybe in the conference finals we get matched up with the Pacers or a a Knicks. That would be my ideal. I wouldn't want to have to go through any of the big men because that's going to be one of the tough aspects for the Celtics here. But bringing in Namus Kata might help out the Boston Celtics in that aspect, having that depth, having him be on the squad. And I'm very, very happy that he's a part of the squad and now with us. If you guys have been here for a long time, you know I've been supportive of Namus Kata ever since he signed with the Boston Celtics as he was a G League runner-up for MVP. He was dominant with the Sacramento Kings. And as a fellow you know, person who's Portuguese. I'm a big, big supporter. Very, very happy that he got the first standardized contract in the NBA as a Portuguese uh, NBA player. Everybody from this country of Portugal should be ecstatic for him. He is going to be, you know, making some big time progress over there. And it looks absolutely fantastic. Why is it doing that? There we go. Game should be back. Yep. As the Bucks make a shot, unfortunately, what is going on? We're a little bit behind. It went back a little bit, but after this first quarter comes back after these two minutes, we'll catch back up. Bobby Portis makes a three for the Bucks as we come back. Seven of nine from three is Milwaukee. Just a night where they're just heating up at home. Celtics hitting a turnaround jumper. Air ball from Jalen Brown. (sighs) 
<sighs> Lillard with a deep three. Any? Oh my God! What can we do? There's nothing we can do. That's a Damian Lillard special three there. Like Jesus. Down 17. Oh my gosh. Tyson is on the way, bro. I'm going to go to bed, bro. If they get higher lead than 30, I'm out. No worries, T-Snizzle. I don't blame you on that. Pritchard for three. Hopefully, we don't get to that bad. He misses. Rebound Bobby Portis. This better not be a repeat of last time. This better not be a repeat of last time. Portis with another basket. Come on! Let's get into the paint and score. Maybe this is a throwaway game on purpose and we're just doing it in the most casual way. Some good ball movement from the Celtics on a three-point. Pritchard, or no, excuse me, Jalen Brown for three, misses. Hauser with the rebound. Brown back out. Goes to the rack. Makes the tough basket. That was nice. That was nice. Yes, it has been. Celtics haven't been able to score at all at the paint. That's why we're taking threes. And if we're not making our threes, then we're a one-dimensional team right now. Giannis misses it, gets his own rebound, tries to get it in. Jalen Brown is having a bad night. And why do we have Peyton Pritchard on Giannis? This is just stupid. I think that they're experimenting with Peyton Pritchard on some bigger guards. I saw last game versus the Kings. We used him on some, or not last game, but the game that we played against the Sacramento Kings. They had him on him for some sort of aspects. And I didn't necessarily agree with it as well. But, yeah, it's just absolutely ridiculous. Trying to just do it. Giannis is at the free throw line, though. Take a little while. Got a comment here from Jose Sabug. Kabug? I'm sorry if I mispronounced your last name, my guy. But you said, what's up, dude? Watching from Eloy, Eloy City in Philippines. Nice to see. Nice to be here, dude. I'm a fan of Boston since the great Larry Bird. What's up, Jose? Glad you could turn out here. Happy to have you. How is the Philippines, my dude? That's absolutely crazy that you're tuning in from here. Thank you. Shout out to you for tuning in here as we watch the Boston Celtics. Glad you're a Boston Celtics fan. Who's your favorite Boston Celtics player at this current moment on this squad right now? Just Giannis Antetokounmpo just made a free throw. Misses the second, though. Jalen Brown gets the rebound here. Derek White's bringing the ball up. Got a call for a screen from JB. As the clock winds down. Celtics up the final shot as Derek White goes to the basket. Gets trapped baseline. Makes a nice pass to Sam Hauser, who made a perfect cut to the rim to get a basket with a nice layup as clock winds down. The Celtics only down 16 here, 31 to or 37 to 21. So I think that things that definitely need to be changed is that perimeter defense. Obviously, the Bucks 7 for 9 from three-point range. Hopefully, that can cool down for the Boston Celtics so we can see some success on our offensive side. But the Bucks have just come out shooting out guns blazing where the Celtics have been limited to only shooting threes, having no Al Horford, having no Kristaps Porzingis. Like I mentioned throughout this uh, live stream, it's been very, very hard for the Boston Celtics to defend at the rim and score at the rim. They're getting a lot of blocks. They're getting a lot of their shots blocked. They're getting a lot of their shots, you know, stolen. And it's just hard for them to, you know, control the ball dribbling at the rim in this game. We've seen some air balls from the Celtics from three-point range, from the mid-range as well. Something that they definitely need to work on. The offense is just not there for the Boston Celtics. And the Bucks are just playing on a different level. Celtics definitely have to take it up another notch and drive into the rack and scoring at the offensive on the offensive side if they want to be able to come back and win this game. But like I had mentioned throughout this whole entire live stream, winning the game, losing the game, it doesn't really matter. The Celtics and Bucks are both locked up for the playoffs. This ultimately just has to deal with playoff seeding for the Milwaukee Bucks. It's no worries. The Celtics are experimenting with Xavier Tillman and nothing like that. It's a okay. We just gotta relax, have a good night off. Just don't want to necessarily get blown out here just because I don't want to see people on Twitter, people overreacting on social media, talking about how the Celtics are frauds and we're going to have, you know, all these people on ESPN coming out because the last time the Celtics played on TNT versus the Bucks, that is what happened. 
So I desperately don't want to see, you know, another massive blow. I'd like the Celtics, you know, at least keep the game close if they're going to lose this matchup, if they want to experiment with that. Like I said, let me know what you guys think down below. Not really freaking out about this. Just would like to see a little bit of a closer game. Definitely don't want to see a blowout. If you see a blowout into the second half, I'm going to be a little bit frustrated just because it's going to be an annoying next couple of days. We are taking this game like a drill, not even trying, just not even trying, just chilling. Exactly, exactly. We're just chilling, having fun. Like we mentioned, Peyton Pritchard's been guarding guys like Giannis. Like, they're experimenting. They're having fun. They're just trying to do their best with different lineups, trying to utilize who's going to work out in each situation, trying to figure out if these guys can step up and be those role players and those key effective players for the playoffs, giving them some, you know, key high-level moments in the regular season. But necessarily, these games don't really mean anything. Berlin Birkin also says we will sweep them badly. That's what I'm thinking. I would th I'm thinking that we can be able to sweep a bunch of teams and help out. And Jose says, yeah, dude, it's a sunny summer. Here, lots of foreign people visit here in Boracay Island. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I have to check it out for sure. I know that there's a lot of basketball fans in the Philippines necessarily. I don't know if they're all 100% Celtics fans, but I do know that there's a big basketball following in the Philippines. We have a bunch of fans from the Philippines that watch Celtics Digest. And again, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for hanging out with us tonight. Hopefully this can be the place for you to, you know, get your Celtics stuff, get your Celtics knowledge. We can have some back and forth and talk about the Boston Celtics. Let me know your thoughts down below with the Celtics down below in the chat. We can go back and forth again love having new people in the chat love having new people to talk and break down this game with but rob here another guy from the philippines a very very avid supporter of the celtics saying winning against the bucks means more than winning versus portland of the world this in new york our last game versus playoff teams we should be treating this game like a playoff game this is terrible yeah i can see what you mean these two games are definitely the ones we want to win the game versus uh charlotte the game versus washington are the you know two wash away games but if milwaukee's shooting seven for nine from three point range they're eventually going to cool off. We just got to, you know, start getting into a little more, a little bit more rhythm on the offensive side. But we're back to the game. So I'm going to, why is it doing that? I'm going to put it back on. Tillman misses a three. Here we go. Bobby Portis going down low. And he makes it. Oh, my God. What's going on? Good ball movement from the Celtics on the three-point line. The Hauser in the three-point corner misses the shot. Unable to get the rebound. Celtics struggling on the boards tonight. Here's another three from Portis. Misses it. Celtics are able to get the defensive rebound, which is huge. Peyton Pritchard comes up with it, brings the ball up the court here. Going to look around to Sam Hauser, back out to Pritchard, back down. Drew Holiday's going to look like he wants to attack the rim here. Going to put Beasley down low into the post. Turn around, jumper misses as Tillman and Bobby Portis try to go for the rebound there. Celtics will retain the possession you got 16 total people in the stream, though, so if you're enjoying the stream, if you're enjoying everything, make sure to hit a like button here if you are new so we can get as many Boston Celtics fans in here as possible, get the community booming, get everybody hanging out here. Peyton Pritchard with the three, misses. Hauser tries to get the rebound. Long tip, lots of the Bucks tipping it, and Giannis is able to come down with the rebound. Pass from Giannis down low to Pat Connaughton, the Boston native of Arlington, the Massachusetts native from Arlington. And Giannis makes the tough shot on Xavier Tillman. Some great defense from Tillman there, but unfortunately, better offense from Giannis. Down 20 points here in the second quarter. Not what we would like to be seeing as Celtics fans, but let's crawl back into this. Let's not roll over and die. Jason Tatum getting double teamed in the corner. Goes baseline and gets a dunk, Jason Tatum. Let's go. Talk yo smack, Jason. Talk yo smack. Let's go. Jason Tatum, five points, two for five from the field. Again, not the greatest night from Jason Tatum, not the greatest night from Jalen Brown offensively. But let's get into some rhythm here. Let's keep it going. Three from Connaughton, misses. The Bucks have been missing some threes here the last couple possessions. This is where the Celtics need to come alive here. Let's get this offensive going. Let's make some threes of our own or find some. And we get a turnover from Drew Holiday as he tries to pass it across the court. Come on. 
Giannis bullies Drew down. He falls. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, this is not good. We need to wake up here. Connaughton gets to the rack and he scores. T Snizzle says he'll be right back. No worry, T Snizzle. We'll catch you in a little bit. Again, Celtics down 20 points here 23 to 43. Come on. Tatum pass out. Good ball movement on the three-point line. Holiday in the corner for three. He misses it. Giannis with another rebound. He's got ten boards and nine first quarter points. We're not even halfway through the second. What are we doing? Good block by Tillman on Connaughton. Good job, Tillman. Good, buddy. Good job to stay aggressive on that defensive side. Don't get beat by him. He tries to get by you twice. Stick with him. Gets by Pritchard. Nah, I'm going to take over now. I'm going to help out on that defensive side. Get that block. Beasley misses the three. Giannis, another rebound. Celtics unable to box him out and limit him with no Al Horford. Beasley gets to the rack on an easy basket. Pritchard, Judge Holiday, missed pass. Just sloppy passing from the Celtics. Lots of turnovers. An ability to make shots, an ability to close out on the three-point range, and the Bucks just dominating down low as Portis goes to the rack. Tillman, the only big body out there, goes to close out on Portis on the three-point line. He catches him off balance, flat-footed. He gets by him with ease, and the Celtics having Tatum and Hauser. No one wants to step up to go guard that Bobby Portis slam, and he gets an easy dunk here. Celtics, no size in tonight's matchup, unfortunately. Getting absolutely manhandled by a very physical Bucks team. Down 24 points, 47 to 23. T-Sins also said, this is crazy. I knew this would happen. I had a figure. I had a sim similar idea as well. No Al Horford to stop Giannis Antetokounmpo or Giannis Antetokounmpo stopper not playing. I thought Xavier Tillman would be able to do a better job. He's doing his best. But the Celtics are also running Xavier Tillman as the only center and Luke Cornett as the only center. They're not running them together. They're not running a double big lineup to even stop the Milwaukee Bucks scoring in the paint. So what that's showing to me is, is Joe doesn't care about the win. He necessarily doesn't need this win. He's just using this as a trial game. And that's A-OK. -okay. We're just trying things out with Luke Cornett, trying things out with a guy in Xavier Tillman. Honestly, tuning into this G League game might be more exciting now at this point, breaking down the G League game because the Celtics are in the finals for the G League game. That's a big game for everybody. And the Celtics, regular teams, taking the night off, it seems like. But like we mentioned, not an important win, not a necessary win, not something that we need to freak out about or worry about. We have the first seed locked up. We're going to be A-OK. -okay. We're going to match up against uh, a pretty solid team in the first round, but I still feel confident. Let's experiment. Let's have some fun. I just, again, don't want to see the blowout. Jose says, I was, I remember how Bird and Parrish were at the end of games for a shot championship. You got it. That's amazing. Yeah, see, I didn't get to see Larry Bird, Robert Parrish, but they were amazing players. My grandma has told me stories about them. Wish we could see some of those clutch shots. I know we've seen them with Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown over the last couple seasons, but we want to see them hit in the playoffs this year. Rob says that this game is over. Got punched in the mouth again. Got punched in the mouth again. And no counter punch. If he started the bench and played the bench, would have a built-in excuse. Everyone's gonna have a field day with this. Yuck! Exactly. That's what I'm saying. That's why I don't want to see the blowout. That's why we're gonna be playing these starters. Let's fight back. If we lose by ten, if we lose by eight, it's a okay. But if we have these starters out here. And we get blown out by 15, 20 points. We can't let that happen because then fans are gonna freak out. Fans are gonna start getting mad. People are gonna start outraging, calling us cowards start saying that we're frauds the media heads like perkins and the people on espn are going to be saying oh the bucks are on a four game losing streak and they're terrible but they could beat the celtics oh the celtics have the Celt no one has to fear anything about the boston celtics the celtics are terrible and we can't have that discourse and i don't want to see that happen and twitter is going to be a field day tonight it's not going to be fun we're back celtics are here three big three from xavier tillman out of the timeout okay okay xavier Okay, Xavier. Horford stands up for the three as well. Let's go. Let's go. 
that connection, I'm telling you, the next Al Horford, the Celtics, are going to lock up Tillman. They're going to put him in a lab with Al Horford in the corner of the gym of the R-back center. And they're going to say, shoot threes all afternoon. Celtics get an unfortunate to foul on Giannis Antetokounmpo on the defensive side. But I'm telling you right now, Xavier Tillman's going to be locked in that gym, shooting corner threes, shooting elbow threes, shooting top of the key threes, and Al Horford is going to mentor this man to be the baby version of himself. And he is going to be a steal. The Celtics fans are going to talk about how getting Xavier Tillman for two second round picks was an absolute fleece. And he is going to be a long-term Boston Celtic, a name in the system, and I'm telling you, by next year, I'm going to be rocking a Xavier Tillman Sr. jersey. But here we are, Giannis, after those free throws, we are back. Sorry my little rant about Xavier Tillman. I just really love how he's fit in with this squad. And here we go. Good ball moving on the three-point line here. Derek White for three. He makes it. Let's go. Back-to-back -back threes for the Boston Celtics. Derek White heating up. Tillman eating up. Come on. Let's get those threes going. Stick on the good defensive side. Good block by Tillman. Or that wasn't Tillman. That was Tatum. Good pass out from Pritchard. Underneath. Back out to Pritchard from Tillman. Another three. And he makes it. Let's go. Doc Rivers. Quick timeout. Celtics. Three quick threes there. Obviously down 17 points. Still down by a lot. But Tillman, out of the timeout, hits a big three. Then the Boston Celtics get a little bad of a foul. Giannis goes to the line, gets some good ball movement on the three-point line. We've seen the last couple of games, the ball movement has been crucial for the Boston Celtics' success over, the, over their offense. We've seen it in the game versus Portland. We saw it versus Chicago a couple weeks ago. We saw it versus Detroit. The ball movement on the three-point line helps out and allows the defenders to bite and allows the Celtics to have a second-hand step at getting to the rack if they don't feel comfortable taking that three-point shot. It has helped us out so much, and it's helping us out in tonight's game again as well. We saw it again versus the Thunder versus the Kings. That ball move on the three-point line has been one of our greatest assets. I know Jeff mentioned that last time he was in the stream, and it has been a key aspect for the Celtics this season. But like I mentioned, Celtics, Xavier Tillman hits a three. Right after that, go down. Derek White hits a three, gets a steal. Peyton Pritchard underneath the basket, finds a beautiful pass at Tillman. Tillman, very, very unselfish, gives the ball up back to Peyton Pritchard, who hits a dip, another deep three. Down 17, but out of the timeout, quick nine points, a little bit of a good look. Not a good look. Bench the center starter second half. Should have benched everyone to begin with. Exactly. Coming out a little lackadaisical, but I think we're going to fight back a little bit. Again, don't think that we're going to win this game, but if we lose by 8, if we lose by 5, 13 even, it's okay. It's okay. Can't lose by 20, can't lose by 30. Just can't let that happen. Don't need to win, don't need to lose. Facts, we can't take the risk of Porzingis or someone important getting hurt. We should bench everyone until playoffs. Yeah, that's what I think we're going to see in the last two games. The games versus the Hornets on Friday and the game on the Wizards on Sunday. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I don't think we're going to see any of the starters. And I definitely on that one Sunday game, no, no. But for that game on Friday versus the Hornets, I don't think we're going to see maybe Tatum because he wants to play against the Hornets. But no Zingas, no Brown. Maybe no Drew Holiday. Celtics are going to take a little bit of rest to gear up for the playoffs. I don't know necessarily when the playoffs start. I know that the play-in begins next Tuesday. It is one week from today. Season ends Sunday. Monday is a day off. Tuesday begins the play-in, which I do believe that the play-in is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, right? I, I believe, right? So playoffs start Saturday or Friday? I, I don't know. I, I just am very, very excited for the playoffs. Like I mentioned, we're going to have these streams going from the end of the regular season to the playoffs. So if you enjoy these streams, if you enjoy hanging out here, we got a total of 18 people in the stream. We've had a lot of people in the stream tonight. Hit that like button so we can get as many Boston Celtics fans in here as possible. Hit that subscribe button. And this is the place for you guys to tune into these watch-along live streams. I know there's some other people doing them as well for Celtics content. If you guys want to tune into them, hang out with them, A-okay, -O -A no worries. But if you guys enjoy my energy, if you guys enjoy interacting with the chat, if you guys enjoy hanging out here, 
hit that subscribe button, come tune in with us because during the playoffs, we're going to be having these live streams still and we're going to be having a lot of energy, lots of fun here. We want to keep them going and it all starts with you guys hanging out here and joining in the stream. But here we are, we're getting back to the game. Let's get ready to go. Let's look at the comments right before the game starts though. Rob says, we have a miracle comeback game in us. This is the game to use it. Like, can we channel our inner Dean Wade and get hot from our three and defend? Make it competitive at least. We can experiment and win. Exactly. Let's make it competitive. Let's heat up a little bit. Let's play some good outside on the defensive side. Tillman is still out there. Tillman getting a lot of minutes tonight. Getting a lot of run with this squad. Missed basket. And he says, and Jose says, dude, I remember when I was a kid wearing shoes, have brand names, Celtics and logo. That's my happy moments. My grandparents gift to me. Exactly. Celtics have been all bred to us as little kids. That's why we all love the Boston Celtics. We grew up with them as fans, as children. I know for me, as a, in 2008, seeing the title team getting to witness Rajon Rondo, Ray Allen, Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce, that's what made me fall in love with this squad. And then obviously... The rise of Marcus Smart, Terry Rozier, Isaiah Thomas fought me through my dog days. Avery Bradley, all those fun players. Marcus Morris have really kept me enthralled with this team. And now, obviously, we got the superstars with Tatum and Brown and Holiday and White. Tatum misses the three. Tip rebound from Cornette all the way to someone on the backcourt for the Beasley drives it. Misses it. And then Damian Lillard goes for the... Um, tipping over over the back foul. Where's the foul? Great now the refs on that BS. That's what I'm saying. Give us that foul call. Damian Lillard, eight points, three for four from the field. Good ball movement, great touch pass. Derek White open in the three corner misses. Great re tip rebound from Luke Cornett again. Back out to the to the top of the elbow. Drew Holiday gonna go to the rack. Floater misses. Tip rebound misses. Tip rebound again misses. And Lopez comes down with it. Missed three. Tatum going to the rack. Trying his best. G tries to get the rebound. Unable to. Brown then gets it. Goes to the rack. Middleton. Block on Middleton. Brown will be now at the rack as the Celtics are down 32 to 51. Uh, we're getting a we're getting a green light special here. Refs gonna give them their ball, their bias. I hope not, but we're getting a green light special here. It's Chris Middleton and the Bucks are challenging that call on the floor. The ruling is a block. I don't necessarily really know if it was a block to be honest, but I'm hoping it's a block foul. foul. We need these free throws from JB here. We need to hit them. We need to stay alive. Come on. Come on, Celtics. Again, like I said, let's keep it let's keep this alive. Let's keep fighting. Let's not lose. By 19. Let's not get publicly embarrassed on TNT again by the squad that already did it to us. Cause then we're gonna have to deal with a lot of people calling us frauds. And I don't want to deal with that. And I know you guys don't want to have to defend the Boston Celtics. I don't know. I know you guys don't want to have to deal with it either. What are your guys' thoughts, though, in the game right now? Again, like I mentioned, Celtics starting to hit their threes a little bit here, but maybe a little bit too late. Defensively, still not being able to stop them from three-point range. They missed some more threes, I guess, but they're still scoring at the rack with ease, still getting in there. Celtics unable to defend at the rim tonight. It's just tough struggles. We're back. Let's see what they say. Let's see what they say. Buffering. We're back. Hear that? First foul that the Bucks been charged with this whole entire game. It's absolutely ridiculous. Also, serious question. I'm gonna. Can I do another poll in here? Yes. 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 No. Are you kidding me? 
Are you kidding me? I was saying yes because I thought we got they they made it seem like we got the ball. Alright. Alright. That's absolutely ridiculous. They still have yet to complete a foul compete complete a foul. If I could speak English. And we got another Celtics foul as you jinx it. JB you now hooks Brooke Lopez to send a sign saying, Give me a call, man. Yeah. T Snizzle says refs. That's what I'm saying. T Snizzle. That's what I'm saying, my dude. That's what I'm saying. And everyone's going to say, oh, Patrick Beverly in the starting lineup change wonders. No. Middleton, tough shot, air ball, misses, like, awful. Brown, kick out to Holiday for three. Come on, Holiday. Misses. Get the rebound. JB with the rebound back out to Tatum. Tatum going to kick back out to Holiday again for three. Holiday this time. Yes, sir. All right, Holiday, let's go. All right, bad pass from the Bucks there down low. Underneath the basket, uh, Brooke Lopez gets confused if the ball was going to hit the rim or was gonna, he was going to catch it, which is huge. 225 total people have been in here, though. That's absolutely fantastic. Seven total likes, 14 people total in here right now. So if you guys are enjoying the stream, if you guys are having fun, hit that like button. Some good move, ball movement here from the Celtics. Derek White with a floater. Luke Cornett goes up for the rebound. Can't come down with it. Goes up for the other one. Can't come down with it. Now Giannis in transition. Drew Holiday gets a little bit of a steal down. A little bit of a touchdown low. Then Giannis goes up for it. Misses it. Pat Bev goes up. Misses it. Tries to grab the rebound and runs out of bounds. Bucks ball. What is going on? We, we can't get anything today. We can't get anything today with the referees. Damon Lillard for three. Misses off the front rim. Jalen Brown with the rebound. Now Jalen Brown bringing the ball up. Pass out to Holiday. Holiday going to back down. Good pass down. Low to Luke Cornette. Let's go. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we're losing to a team with a bad coach. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Doc should not be a coach. As much as I love him for the championship, he should not be a coach right now. 14-4 run. Wow. Giannis posting up. Holiday spins off and gets a slam because no one's down there to help him out. No Luke Cornett. He has to come from the three-point line to help him out. White for three off a handoff. A screen handoff from Holiday. He misses. Good steal from Brown. Emphatic slam. It gets blocked by Giannis. Oh, my. Uh, oh, my God. Brown gets a steal in the half court. And then it gets stolen. And then it gets blocked by Giannis into a transition. Brooke Lopez. Three. Come on. Pat Kanon, put your hand down, you Massachusetts native. You traitor. And Tatum just slammed it on Brooke Lopez and told the crowd to stay quiet. Oh, my. Oh, my. Patrick Beverly wide open three. Misses. Derek White out to Tatum. Wide open corner three. Brown misses. Cornette's only one that can try to get a rebound. He is unable to pull it down. Beverly, pump fakes in the corner. Going to dribble to the other corner because why not? Giannis down low. Two guys on him. Has to pass out. Beverly goes to the rack. Hook, weird hook shot from base, basically underneath the baseline and hits it. Uh, I don't know what's going on. Patrick Beverly playing. Derek White stepping up into a three, rimming out. Again, Celtics having no offensive gate plan. Just bring the ball up and chuck. 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 Run ISO. Three ball, 
Three passes on the perimeter. All right, Chuck. Jason Tatum just got an emphatic slam. Just waits to say F you to the Bucks. Now it's done. Oh, my God. Beverly on Cornette. Step back three. Makes it. Oh, my God. Why is Thanasis getting up? Thanasis, sit down, you Nepo roster spot. He's not even a Nepo baby because his dad. it's not his dad. It's his brother. But he's legitimately, like... You're only on the roster because your brother's in. Your brother is on the team and he's the star player. Or else they'd have another freaking AJ Green, another white shooter from Northern Iowa in your thirteenth roll spot, buddy. Don't act like you're a part of the squad. Celtics almost down thirty. Brown down to Cornette, out to Tatum. Tatum for three, misses wide open. Cornette trying to fight for that rebound, but unable to get it. Here we go. Let's let's see what the comments are saying. Let's see what you guys are saying, because this is ridiculous. Ron, Ron Tardiff, what's up, Ron? How you doing tonight? Glad you could make it. You're saying Celtics suck tonight, Bruce. Terrible. Are they just not interested? It seems like it. It's looking like another one of those Atlanta games. Tatum takes the mid-range. He makes it. Just tough offensive game for the Celtics. <coughs> Excuse me. No Al Warford, no Christoph Porzingis, no really physical presence, real physical pressure down low. So very, very hard for this squad to be able to battle the likes against Brooke Lopez, Giannis Antetokounmpo. And it also doesn't help when the Celtics can't score at the rim because those guys are blocking their shots. And the Bucks are hitting every three that they take. Brooke Lopez has four or five threes at this point. Giannis is scoring basically anytime he wants to get to the basket because he has Luke Cornett on him. Just not... It's an experiment game. Don't want another blowout. That's what's happening. Sad to see. Third quarter, want to fight back. But will we fight back? Looks like it's a little bit too late. Holiday goes for a floater at the shot clock. and gets it with a right-handy layup. No foul, but will get the layup. The Bucks have no foul calls on them. Definitely should have been one right there. Ridiculous. No, I'm Brandon Perna. Says if the Bucks stay as a 2-3 seed, at least they'll be on the opposite side of the playoff bracket. Here's to hoping that they don't shit the bed after this game. So, Brandon, that's kind of my uh, evaluation of this. If we want to pause the uh, pause the stream here as, as we uh, as we as we get uh, to halftime, kind of talking about that. I mentioned earlier in the stream that I think the Bucks are going to lose to the Heat if they possibly play them, possibly even the Pacers. So I don't think the Celtics really have to worry about the Bucks in the playoffs. In my honest opinion, I don't think they're going to make the excuse me Eastern Conference Finals. I think that they're going to get eliminated first round or second round. Excuse me. I think the Celtics' main issue is going up against a healthy Knicks squad or the Miami Heat. I think those are the two teams that the Celtics should fear the most. I think the Bucks could definitely give the Celtics a run for their money. They have in past games, but I'm not confident in the Bucks surviving in the playoffs. They have more losses with a coach in Doc Rivers than they did in Adrian Griffin. Their defense got better, but has it really? They lost to teams like the Grizzlies and the Raptors, and they lost to the Knicks, I believe it was, last night or two nights ago. Two nights ago, excuse me, on Sunday. And they were down 10 with two minutes left, and they just took out their starters. Like, they just wanted to lose that game. So, I don't know. Really, really ridiculous to see. T. Snizzle says, this is wild, definitely a wild first quarter. Not what the first quarter, first half, excuse me, that I was expecting. Ron says they suck. They definitely not playing great offensively and are forced to take jump shots, forced to be shooting these threes, and it's not working out. Rob version one, not to mess up with Rob, with Ron Tardiff, says, refs have been terrible too, doesn't help. They call one first half foul with us with 50 seconds left in the first half. Celtics have to play through the force, which isn't our strong suit. We're a smart finesse team. Exactly. Playing through, you know, the physical bodies of guys like Giannis and Brooke Lopez and Bobby Portis is tough for this team already with Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, as we're seeing right now. And having no inside presence to, you know, draw them out to the three-point line, to kind of distract them, you know, be a nuisance to, you know, I guess like hinder them or, or you're not going to be able to eliminate Giannis Antetokounmpo or Brooke Lopez, but no, negate them in any way. Celtics don't have that tonight. And as we've seen, the Celtics are either running Xavier Tillman at center 
or running Luke Cornett at center. They're not running a double big lineup of Xavier Tillman and Luke Cornett. We haven't seen that tonight. So the Celtics aren't, you know, trying that out and trying to experiment with that. They're trying to figure out who's going to work out best against some of these bigger guys deeper in the playoffs. If we do need a bigger body with guys like Kristaps Porzingis, you know, going through the lengths of the series. Because if the Celtics do play the Bucks. They're going to be a 2-3 seed. They're going to probably meet them in the conference finals. That's where they're going to meet them. So if a guy like Christoph Sporzing is, is worn down, if a guy like Luke Cornett is worn down, if a guy like Al Horford's worn down, a guy like Xavier Tillman's got to be able to take these minutes and be able to stand up to defend these type of players and get these type of run. So the fact that he's experimenting with it now and getting it in the regular season and we're not seeing it for the first time in Game 5 or in Game 6, I'm glad we're seeing it right now. Glad we're seeing it right now. Will they play like this on every TNT game, I think? Ah, that's that's a question to ask, Dwayne. I think that it's the Bucks in TNT. I think that's what the curse is. I think playing both of those, mixing both of those together, is not what the Celtics want to see. T. Stizzle says he'll be back at the third. No worries, T. Stizzle will catch you at the end of halftime. Thank you for tuning in for the first half. Dwayne says, this shows you how much Porzingis means to us and Big Al. Exactly, Dwayne. We were talking about how in recent games, Porzingis had been shooting threes and I'm not gonna. I'm gonna say I want him to dominate in the paint. I want him to accept that aspect. He's had some big three point games, but him and Hal Horford have been tremendous at rim block protection, rim rim blocking, shot blocking, just everything at that in general. Being those paint beasts, and we saw with last game as well. Kristaps Porzingis had, I believe, a total of four or five blocks versus the Portland Trailblazers, which is huge, and he'd be doing a lot of help handling like guys like Brook Lopez and Giannis Antetokounmpo down low. Fortunate that he's not with us tonight. Hey, like it goes, 20-point lead ever safe in the NBA. Exactly, exactly. It's not definitely over yet. You said that Dwayne also says that he got so mad in the first and second quarter that he had to go punch his heavy bag. No, that's okay. It's okay. Like I mentioned, we don't need this win. It's not a necessary win. It's not something that is, you know, something that we need. You know, like, I don't know how to say this, but, like, we are a okay it's not. It's nothing to overreact with. It's again. I just don't want to deal with the media hating on us because we get blown up by twenty points to the Bucks when Jason Tatum play. Can I watch the game on here? Said FX Trader CR the CEO. Unfortunately, we cannot live stream the full game. We do have the score. I can't see it right now, but if you do see this little bit over here, the score will be popped up when I do that, and you'll be able to hear the audio from the game when the game comes back on. Currently, we are at halftime, so we do have to turn off as they're showing some first half highlights. We'll have to wait and see what kind of lineup the Celtics bring out for the Celtics for the second half. We are down 20 points, so if the Celtics do want to make it a little bit of a competitive matchup, they can bring out some of their starters again and just run it back and see if they can will us back into this game. Or what we might see is the Celtics rest their starters for the rest of the second half. See a Peyton Pritchard and Xavier Tillman, Luke Cornett, Sam Hauser, Svima High Luke 50-point masterclass matchup. And we'll see them run for 48 minutes and play a Tom Thibodeau-style game. Dwayne, you said you can't stand the little Chihuahua Patrick Beverly. Neither can I. Neither can I. It's, a, it's really ridiculous. Uh, not that I would say I'm a Patrick Beverly hater, but um, ever since the uh, whole uh, Lakers versus Celtics matchup, maybe it was last year, I believe, with the, with the camera. Yeah, no. Me and Patrick Beverly... We respected Patrick Beverly. We understood his dog in him. We liked his defense. But after that, man, oh, man. I don't know. I don't know how much I can handle more of Patrick Beverly. A little bit of ridiculous. And Rob says, oh, sorry, Rob. Forgot your, fir forgot your first one. You said, can't stand Pat Bev either. Dirty player. I hope we have a miracle comeback in us in the second half. It's been given this season when the seas go down big. We haven't really done anything. Oh, well. Yeah. Well, that's the thing is, in the first half, We've seen with the Boston Celtics when they come out and they beat teams like the Bucks or even teams like the Thunder, they come out in the first half on fire and then they collapse in the second half. In the third quarter, teams start heating up. As we all know, the Celtics have that third quarter slump. So maybe that's something we can look forward to. Maybe tonight we can see a third quarter rise from the Boston Celtics, a little bit of a fight back. And then in the fourth quarter, they start to die out a little bit if they only do lose this game, like I mentioned. Three points, five points, eight points, maybe even 13 we can't lose by more than 15, 20 plus because then everybody's going to be coming at our heads and it's not going to be fun. It's about that Celtic pride, man. Exactly, Dwayne. That's what I'm saying. You got to defend our players to the day we die. All about that Celtic pride. We love our Boston Celtics. We love our players. We want to make sure that they feel it. Like, that's the thing. Us Bostonian fans, us 
Celtics fans in general, that's why I love players like Michael Smart. That's why I love players like Jalen Brown. They give it their all on the court. They dive. They go hustle. They go hard. They give it 100% every single day. I don't like the dainty players. I don't like the players that are looking for the foul calls, the players that feel that they're better than others. We want their hard-nosed, griddled guys fighting for every loose ball. And that's what Boston Celtic culture basketball is about. 20-point lead versus Celtics is typically safe. We haven't shown that we can do miracle comebacks this season. People are going to take out this game as the Celtics as we shouldn't be down 20 with KP out. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. I don't want to hear the backlash. I don't want to hear everybody freaking out. I saw that versus the the Kings game, right? I don't know how many of you guys watched that Sacramento Kings game on Friday night. But the Celtics, if you guys did watch that game, were up big. They were up 14 in the fourth quarter, six minutes to go, and they decided to rest their starters. They pulled everybody out, said, you know what? Take the night off. The Kings need this game more than we do. Let's just have some fun on a Friday night. They ran their end of the bench, and it became very close. As we all know, Xavier Tillman hit a fantastic game winner for the Boston Celtics and also helped out on the defensive side. Top to bottom, guys like O'Shea Brissett, Suma Hailu, Peyton Pritchard all played fantastic, and it was a very great win for the Boston Celtics. Saw a lot of posts talking about the Celtics and claiming that, oh, they were up 14 points and only one by one. What? Like, we took our starters out and played our bench. That's why we threw the game away. It was not necessarily a win that we needed. So... No need to freak out. No need to overreact. And tonight, I already know that people are going to be on Twitter, already screaming, Bucks fans in general, oh, we beat you with Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. Oh, we beat you fully healthy. Oh, we beat you with this. Oh, we beat you with that. But they're all going to ignore the fact that Chris Dobbs, Porzingis, and Al Horford were out. Luxios says, Raptors, Grizzlies, and Wizards, all trash teams beat the Bucks, and we are losing. What a joke. Unfortunately, like we mentioned, Lucios, don't know if you've been watching the game, but no Chris Dosworth and yes, and no Al Horford, which means that the Celtics, hard to defend against the paint and against Brooke Lopez and Giannis Antetokounmpo. The only way you can really stop them is throwing two big men at them, and the Celtics have yet to run one double big lineup tonight. Name is Kata, the new signee, is playing in the main uh, Celtics championship game alongside with Jordan Walsh. So the Celtics big men that they have on the roster tonight are O'Shea Brissett, Xavier Tillman, and Luke Cornett. And we've yet to see any lineup involving two of those guys at the same time on the court. We've only seen Luke Cornett and Xavier Tillman out there one at a time. So unfortunately, the Boston Celtics have had no interior paint presence to stop anybody on the Bucks, And the Bucks are shooting lights out from offense. They were 7-for-9 to start off the game from three-point range. And Brooke Lopez has four to five three-pointers which is something, as a Celtics fan, you can kind of expect. Maybe, maybe it's something you deal with. Maybe something you have to worry about. But not something you're game planning for. Not something that you're actually preparing for. So, in my honest opinion, I am not freaking out. I'm not worried. It's A-OK. We'll be OK. We'll be fine. Like we mentioned, we have the one seed locked up. Who's passing us? Absolutely nobody. Nobody's passing us. We have no worries. We have no issues. The only issue we have is the media, the, the media going up against us and other things as well. It doesn't matter if Porzingis and Al Horford isn't playing. The Grizzlies play with the G League team and beat the Bucks Again, like I mentioned, the Milwaukee Bucks shot 7 for 9 from 3-point range. And the Boston Celtics, who prioritize from scoring from three-point range are not shooting as good as the Milwaukee Bucks. The Bucks currently are shooting 55% from three-point range and have a total of 10 of 18 threes, which goes to show you that 30 of their points are from three-point shots. The Celtics have nine total makes with 10 more shots than the Milwaukee Bucks. Therefore, we're shooting at 32%. The Celtics also have one foul call to their name compared to the Bucks, and the Bucks are shooting 60% from the free throw line. So if the Bucks are able to hit their threes in an efficient clip and able to score at the rack in an efficient clip, the Celtics not being able to stop them on defense at all is what's killing them in this game. Also to the fact 
that they can't score at the rack because guys like Giannis Antetokounmpo, guys like Bobby Portis, and guys like uh, Brooke Lopez are at the rack with their two hands jumping and swatting and blocking any Celtic that goes and tries to score at the rim. Therefore, they're unable to score from the three because their shots aren't falling on a bad shooting night, and they're unable to score in the paint because there's no big man presence to draw any of them out. How do you expect them to do anything? Do you think that Jason Tatum can go on Brooke Lopez and go, okay, yeah, I'm going to drag you out and you're going to come out with me? No. Brooke Lopez is going to stay in the paint and say, if Jason Tatum gets the ball, I can just block him. And if he wants to go out, I'll go out with him when he has the ball. But there's no necessary reason for me to follow him outside of the paint without the ball in his hands. With a guy like Christos Porzingis or a guy like Al Horford going to set the screen, he drags the center up, going to go out to the corner, he's going to drag the center out there. Someone sets an invisible screen. There's plenty of ways for them to get around it. Without having a big man presence, without having any of your true big men, without having a double big lineup against the Milwaukee Bucks squad who, again, prioritizes their big men and is known for scoring in the paint, that's what's going to happen. Don't know if you're watching the same game I am. Why is the stream all the way back there? Oh, there we go. 14 turnover viewers, though, 10 total likes. Appreciate everybody that's tuned in. Almost, we've had a total of 300 people in the stream. Again, absolutely fantastic. Tonight's been a good night with the stream. Again, if you enjoy the stream, if you guys enjoy the content here on Celtics Digest, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Make sure to hit that like button so we get as many Boston Celtics fans here in the community page. Like I mentioned, I have the Twitter, I have the Discord. The Discord is linked down below in the comment section. So if you want to join the Discord, chat about the Boston Celtics, you're more than welcome to come in there, have a good talk, chat about what you think, your opinions. We can have some more back and forth discourse. Like I mentioned, I want to start these watch along lives, uh, not the watch along live streams, that's what we're doing now, the radio common live streams, excuse me. And that's going to be something that we're going to be starting up. We're going to be starting up shortly as well. So once we get those going, have those radio call-ins, joining that Discord is going to be the way to be able to do those, to be able to talk, to be able to hang out, and have those type of discussions. So if you want to be able to stay advanced and stay up to date on that, make sure to join the Discord. Luxio says, so we were screwed if the Bucks play this way against us in the playoffs, they're going to beat our asses up. Eh. Again, if we have Christos Porzingis, if we have, have Al Horford, we're limiting them down low. We're having some more offensive pressure. They also, you know, have some more versatility to score on offense. The Bucks aren't trapping Jason Tatum. They aren't trapping Jalen Brown. They aren't focusing on them that much. And like I mentioned, I think that we're not going to have to run into the Bucks. I think the Bucks are going to be out in the first or second round, depending on who they match up with. They play the Heat. It's a tough matchup. They play the Pacers. The Pacers have gotten the best of them in the regular season. They're able to beat them driving to the rack as well i don't know just kind of a little bit of a mismatch there sixers don't necessarily know if they beat the bucks but i think they give them some sort of challenge but again celtics i still feel confident baylor is here swear kp is always out man yeah they want to make sure and prioritize his rest the last couple of games coming here i don't expect christoph Porzingis to play in any of them maybe not even play versus the knicks on uh thursday but Definitely not on Friday and Sunday. I think we'll be okay, Luxios. I, I think we'll be okay, man. I think we'll be okay. Again, it's just a bad performance tonight. Just a bad performance. And you're allowed to have those. I know you don't want to have them against the best teams, but it's better than having a bad performance like versus the Wizards. Getting blown up by the Wizards. That's something you don't want to see. And we are back with the stream as the stream is lagging up a storm here so we're gonna we're gonna click back in hopefully get it to work oh my god i don't want to do that don't want to do that why we had a commercial this the game's on No way this stream is so, so far behind that we're still at commercial. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this is the, the messed up one too. Mm -hmm. Let me see. 
sorry about that. The stream just died. So I want to make sure that I can get it back on. If not, I can do the ESPN way where I can break it down via the, the TV, but it will be, yeah, this is, this is bugged. All right, we're going to have to do it the TNT way. Oh, this is annoying. Okay. Let me fix this. Unless we're here, we're good to go. Are we here and good to go? Okay, come on, stream. Oh, we're going to have to adjust this. Yeah, no. It's, it's, it's not, it's not working. Okay. So we're going to fix the stream. We're going to fix this. We're going to get the, the ESPN score up here because the stream is just not working on, on thing here. That's what I'm going to have to do from, from now on. I'm going to have to just, so give me a second. Let me adjust this. And then once this gets adjusted, we'll be back and ready to go with what I want to break down. So, okay, that's not what I wanted to do. I'm just gonna do this. Remove that, remove that, 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 and then, there we go. If you guys can see that here I'll put it up here so it's a little bit bigger I feel like that's a little bit better too so it's out of the way there we go and then here and here okay we're back we're back okay sorry about that sorry I had to get it all set up but again stream dies so if the stream dies I'm sorry but we got to do it the the bootleg way of me being a little bit behind here. Dame's gonna try to get a three up. Probably gonna play some good defense on Lopez. Good pass, good steal from Jalen Brown down low. Celtics go to bring the ball up. Good pass down low to Tillman. Loses the ball. Good steal from the Celtics in transition as the Middleton tries to go coast to coast. Now Brown going to the rack. Goes with the left hand. No foul call on Brooke Lopez here. And now Milwaukee bringing up the ball here with Patrick Beverly calling over Damian Lillard. Sorry, I haven't really been able to commentate over this third quarter. Dame here going to go to the rack. Going to go up this left hand. Get blocked by Drew Holiday. Going to be complaining for a foul. Celtics looking to inbound this, inbound this ball as fast as they can. So they can speed it back up. Good block. Good clean block by, by Drew there. Derek White, though, now bringing the ball up here. Looking to make some passes. Drew Holiday back to Tillman. Tillman now going to the rack, getting by Giannis. Gets the ball hit out of his hands, and it's going to be a turnover. Looking like on the Celtics, unfortunately. Come on. Giannis going to go to the rack. Pass up to Dame. Dame misses the three. Brown with the long rebound. Now Celtics are in transition here. Picking it up. Tatum to the rack and gets fouled by Brooke Lopez.
Doc Rivers looks absolutely furious with the with the Bucks here. And only up 19. Celtics now unable to be, be able to make some of these shots. Derek White now to Brown. Brown down low. Back out to Holiday in the corner for three. Misses. Middleton with the rebound. Bringing the ball up here. The Bucks. Middleton for three, misses. Lopez with the rebound. It's a ball tipped out of his hands. Going to remain Brooklyn's ball as Derek White gets up there to get the block. Got a timeout here for Milwaukee. Celtics still down 19 here in the third quarter. On offense, looking like nothing's clicking. Defensive side, the Bucks have started to miss more and more opportunities. But... It's been tough for this Celtics squad here over the last couple last couple minutes, you know. Tonight has just not been the night for the offense. Has not been flowing. It's not looking good. Very embarrassing tonight. 50 points in the third quarter from this Celtics team is sad. We sometimes see 50 points by 8 minutes to go in the second. So I don't I don't really know what to say. I mean Holiday's got twelve, Tatum's got twelve, Tillman Derrick got six, Brown four, Pritchard three, Hauser two, Cornet five. Jalen Brown, two for twelve from the field. Jason Tatum, five for twelve. Joe Holiday, five for thirteen. Derek White, two for eight. Tillman, two for seven. The best player shooting Jason Tatum forty one percent. The next Drew Holiday around thirty nine. Then three players in the Celtics shooting starting lineup shooting less than 30%. Want to look at the rebounds? Let's check that out. Milwaukee, 12 more total rebounds in the Celtics. Six more total assists. Celtics have yet to attempt a free throw tonight. Double their defensive rebounds. Absolutely atrocious here from the Boston Celtics. Again, not having that paint presence is huge. Not having that Giannis Antetokounmpo, not having to combat against Giannis Antetokounmpo and Brooke Lopez has been devastating. And the Bucks again, hitting a lot of their threes. Celtics not being able to hit their shots. Just not a fun night here. Celtics fans. Got my little stress koala here. Give him a couple. Give him a couple squeezes to, to relieve some of the stress. Because... I understand why people don't want to be in here. I understand why people don't want to be hanging out. It's it's a non-exciting game. This is not what we want. This is not what we are expecting. Not something that fans have been wanting. Not the type of night I was looking forward to. I was expecting a fun night. T. Snizzle, you saying this is so bad? Exactly, man. I was expecting a fun night, man. Saw Jason Tatum was playing. Saw Jalen Brown was playing. Saw it was going to be a good back-to-back -back matchup. I know that we had no Al Horford and KP, but I was like, all right. Celtics are going to still try to you know, keep it competent. We might lose 10, 15 points. It's always okay. We'll be fine, you know, but. This game has just been out of reach since the first whistle here. The Celtics have basically had no sight of a lead. The Bucks have been in total control. The Celtics have maybe gone on a little bit of runs back and forth to, you know, dwindle dwindle it down from 20-point blowout to a 19-point blowout, fight it out, go back and forth, but nothing beneficial to Nothing, nothing beneficial tonight on the offensive side. Defensive side as well, not being able to stop anybody down low. But here we are, we're back. Giannis goes with the, with the hook shot, misses. Derek White rebound. Beats to Tatum. Dribbling the ball out here. Pass to Brown, who takes a three, misses. Holiday. Hauser goes to grab the rebound, throws it off Connaughton, and it's going <clears> to <throat> remain Milwaukee Bucks ball here. 
Sorry, really, there's no energy, no passion. Just, I'm just, I'm just devastated. Again, not mad, not frustrated. Just don't want to deal with this. Don't want to deal with the slander. Brown playing some good defense on uh, onto the Kumpo there, unable to get by him. Then goes to help out on a trap on Lillard. Some good ball movement there from the Bucks as Middleton steps in and hits the jumper. Celtics with less than six minutes to go in the third quarter. Right around the half court, halfway mark of the third. Let's, let's slow this down. Let's put in the starters. Let's call this game quits. Take them out. Holiday, good pass to Hauser. Hauser moving this ball around with Tatum. Tatum steps into a three and hits it. All right, Tatum. All right, Tatum. Work us way back into this game. Middleton now bringing the ball up. 15 points for Tatum. 50% from three-point range. Shooting a decent clip tonight. Giannis gets a big dunk. Goes baseline. Nobody there to stop him. No hanging on the rim tech for Giannis, though. No hanging on the rim tech for him. Tatum going to size up Brooke Lopez. Going to go to the rack. Get a layup. Tough finish. By Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum getting in his bag a little bit here. In the end of the third quarter. Derek White playing some good half-court defense on Damian Lillard. And gets the foul. Hauser watching a replay of Giannis blowing by Hauser on defense. Like, that's a, that's a highlight. Hey, guys. We're only down 19 points, and there's almost... 20 minutes left. Game so far from over four of the Celtics left. Bear this game is so far from over. The Celtics with their put their noses to the grindstones and start playing ball. Exactly. It's still a winnable game. Definitely not over, but again, in a game that we necessarily don't need to win, I don't see us coming back in it, and I would love to see us come back as Hauser takes a three and misses, but unfortunately our offense has not been great tonight. It's been all right. And our defense is subpar. Giannis down low on White. See, this is what I'm saying. We're just experimenting with stuff. Derek White, Hauser, good trap defense. Holiday comes over to get the steal, but loses the ball. So if it goes out of bounds, the Bucks will retain possession here. We got a time out from Milwaukee, it looks like. 55 to 73. Celtics here down 18 points. Looking to dwindle it away. In the third quarter. Will they come back? Will they fight it out? In my honest opinion, no. But it's okay. Let's talk about some other basketball here, though, as we get to commercial break. What do you guys think about UConn winning back-to-back -back NCAA championships? As a, a student of a Big East program, I'm going to Seton Hall. Big ups to UConn. Very, very happy that they were able to secure the crown, get some money for the Big East to help out conference but also you know big ups for dan hurley big ups for the state of connecticut six and O oh in the ncaa tournament amazing feat they also did play at td garden on their way to the championship which was really really amazing to see as well just very very happy for the yukon squad here has been you know just a dominant season for them and, you know some celtics fans also you know go to yukon or reside in the state of Connecticut as well. So another big win for them. And Celtics Nation should be, you know, definitely supportive of the other New England state taking home the championship here. Get some bragging rights across the whole nation as, you know, we all know that now college basketball runs through the Big East, but not only the Northeast as well. T. Snizzle says we're not going to win because as soon as the fourth quarter hits, the whole bench will be out there exactly. That's what I'm thinking. I think at this point of the game, we're going to wrap it up for for play out the end of the third quarter. And then in the fourth quarter, we'll see the bench guys come up. But who knows? If the Celtics can will some points here. String along some more three-pointers. Jason Tatum can heat up a little bit. Who knows? Maybe we could see them take life in the third into the fourth. And start really transcending for the Boston Celtics here. But 
as we all know, we could just roll over. Oops, whoa, that was a very bad voice crack. We, as we all know, we could just roll over and die. And we, we, we've seen that happen before, too. We, we, we've, all, we've all witnessed the roll over and die. It's, it's not as uncommon as you guys think. Well, let me, let me know your thoughts as well on the Namus Kata situation down below in the comments. We released a video of him as well. Finally happy that he has gotten his actual spot with the Boston Celtics. He's no longer on a two-way contract. But that also opens up a spot for the Celtics for a new two-way contract. I know that the main Celtics are in the championship finals now. But signing one of those guys from the main Celtics team to a two-way deal will definitely help out this team with some insurance for the bench, just lengthening it and also getting letting those guys travel and get that experience as well. I don't know who's going to get picked up for that final two-way contract. Could be a guy like DJ Stewart. Could be a guy like Brandon Slater. Could be a guy like Tony Snell for that veteran bench presence, that veteran locker room presence. We'll have to wait and see who they do give that credit to, but I think it will be very, very interesting to see who gets that final two-way spot for this Celtics squad as Kata has you now brought it back. But here we are, we're back here. Celtics are back. Ball movement here from the Bucks. Good block from Derek White on Beasley. Ron says, okay, so it's time to step up and make a statement. Exactly, Ron. Exactly. Let's step up. Let's prove a point here in those last four minutes here. Let's try to will something back. If not, pull the plug on the game and let's see some FEMA high Luke fun shooting because that will at least you know live in the stream a little bit if i get to see some Sfima high luke three-point shots maybe we'll go a little bit crazy we'll have some fun here tatum getting to the rack though pass it to Derek white four three makes the shot for the boston celtics let's go only down 15 now Giannis is on the ground uh-oh Giannis is on the ground asking for a timeout here uh-oh uh-oh Giannis needs help. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Is Giannis hurt? Oh, no. N no. Get him up. He's, is he able to get up? Get him up. Get him up. Oh, no. Yeah, he's looking at his leg. He's grabbing, like, his shin. He's going to the bench. Oh, no. I'm going to have to look at Twitter for this. This is not good. Giannis. So the season we played very bad against the top teams. That's concerning. Luxio says. The Bucks. We played very good for them in the first healthy match we had. The second matchup against them was off a of back-to-back. -back. Tonight, no big man presence to stop them. And yeah, they had no Giannis last game. But we still beat them and came out big in the clutch with Jason Tim and Jalen Brown. The Knicks, we've beaten this season. The Magic, haven't played them in a long time, but I believe we traded off with them. The Cavs, we beat them in two back-to-backs. Yeah, they had that Dean Wade comeback, but that's one game that they had versus us. In the Heat, we beat them in the season series 3-0. So, what good... Besides the Nuggets, who beat us 2-0, and the Timberwolves in the Western Conference, uh, in the Eastern Conference, I think we've been A-OK. -okay. And then Emmanuel says the Celtics team struggles with good teams going into the playoffs. That would be a, this. This would be a good sign. I hope just hope it's not the useful story with playoff Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. I think we'll be a okay. Jason Tatum, playoff Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum had fifty one points in Game Seven last year to win us that Game Seven series versus the Seventy uh, Sixers. And two seasons ago, had Game Six forty four point winner to beat us versus the Bucks. If anything, Jason Tatum comes alive in the playoffs. Jalen Brown last season, yeah, he fell asleep in the playoffs. But in the 2022 finals, he was alive and was the best player. So both of these players, you know, have had good playoff series, have had bad ones. That's what you have the other role players for. That's what you have the Derek Whites, the Drew Holidays, the Kristaps Porzingis. For when, when those guys have a bad game, they can step up and be huge difference makers. And they have been this year. So I do believe that they will do that in the playoffs, Emmanuel. Ron says, definitely not good for Giannis Antetokounmpo. He goes into the tunnel. Game is back. Bucks make a three there. AJ Green, Celtics, 76 to 60, down 16 points with no Giannis onto the Kumpo. Was a quick TV timeout though. Yeah. 
no contact left leg injury. Looking, Giannis reaching for his cap. Derek White for three, misses. Brown with a big rebound, pass out to Tatum. Tatum for three, misses off the back rim. Portis with the rebound. Nuggets are a problem for this, he says, Ron. Exactly. They, they are the problem. They're our biggest X factor because they're the defending champs. But I do believe that we can beat them in a seven-game series. And who's to for sure say they come out the West? A team like the Thunder, the Suns, the Mavericks, Pelicans, Timberwolves, Thunder. They could all go on these type of runs. It's not a guarantee that the Nuggets and Celtics are coming out. Missed opportunity there from the Bucks though on offense here. Leads to a Celtics transition. Tatum with a baseline jam off the spin. And Josh Crampton's here. What's up, Josh Crampton? How you doing tonight? Believe in the comeback. Have faith. Let's go. And Ron, you are agreeing with Josh. Let's go, 100%. Let's keep it going. Jason Tatum, 19 points, 50% from the field. Big time slam there. He said two emphatic dunks as Bobby Portis works down low on Drew Holiday gets an easy turnaround basket Celtics down 16 Brown working Connaughton down low gonna get trapped by Beasley coming over left leaves a guy wide open Holiday gets fouled though Luxios said yeah true we'll be all right yeah what we'll be leaving our guys again there are some tough teams in the Eastern Conference but no Eastern Conference team has beaten us at home this year which is another teleton sign to tell you that we got this. If it goes into a deep series, we got this. At home, we trust our fans. We get our building rocking. Everybody's enjoying it. Tatum steps into a three here. Hits it. Let's go. Celtics down 13 now. All right. We'll win a little bit of a comeback here. Jason Tatum taking over the reins. Told you could have a big time third quarter here. Come back. Dame to Connaughton. Connaughton. Out to Beasley. Beasley for three. Misses. Good box out by Holiday. Porter still gets the rebound, though, but good trap in the corner with Pritchard and, and, and Holiday. That should have been a travel on Portis as he fells to the ground. But turnover by the Celtics. Holiday in transit or Brown in transition. Makes the tough finish. Jalen Brown. Celtics only down 11 here. Good stuff. Let's get a nice defensive stop and get another basket. Holiday back on Portis. Working him. Good block. Good contest. Nice. Good rebound by Tatum. Celtics not going to have the last shot opportunity. Here we go. Tatum obviously dribbling off the clock as he usually does. Going to look for a sidestep three. Pulls it back. Misses Portis with the rebound. Seven seconds to go. Damian Lillard at half court with three. We'll try to get by. We'll lose the ball and transition. Peyton Pritchard with the half court heave. Misses it. Celtics playing some good defense there in the last two minutes. Offense even better on that side. Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, some big time slams. Celtics only down 11 points. Let's will that come back. Let's see it happen. If we were down 15 say throw the bench guys out let's experiment let's have some fun like i mentioned this game is not a necessary win but let's make it close let's not get blown out we were down 19 20 points at halftime we're only down 11 so we cut that lead in half necessarily don't need to win this game i'd love to see us win love to see us get a second half comeback here versus the bucks it would definitely help us out obviously sad to see Giannis go down might be able to help out the boston celtics as well if he doesn't come back in the game but we wanted to see a good win, or if not a good win, at least a non-blowout win so we don't get trolled of by the masses. Luxio says we can beat the Nuggets easily. They aren't the same team as a year ago. I think we can beat them as well. It's just very, very tough. It's just going to be a very, very tough squad. Um, we saw that with our problems with them were controlling them on the glass, being able to box out Jokic. Very, very hard to stop Jokic. Like Ron says, I hope so, Luxios. And you said, there you go. There we go. What are we talking about for there you go? Let's look up. Yep. Giannis is limping off the court. That's not good. Name is Kata, though. 10 points on 5 for 6 shooting in the G League Championship. Let's go.
Giannis. Yeah, they're running Tatum at five and had Hauser guarding Giannis. Yeah, exactly. Keith. Exactly, Keith. You are so right. Nothing to worry about tonight. And again, experimental game. We seem Pritchard being guarding Giannis Antetokounmpo and guys like Brooke Lopez down here tonight in the post. We're running starters. We're experimenting. We're having fun. Running different defensive lineups. Running different schemes. Trying to figure out what's worked best for us. Trying to see what we can use against some of these top heavy teams. Coming back, we're only down by 11, said Dwayne, and Giannis got hurt. Exactly. If we beat them without Giannis, it's not a true win. I said it. Ron, it's a-okay if you don't believe that, but I got a question for you, my guy. So do you not believe that the last game we played versus the Bucks was a real win because they didn't have Giannis again in that one? You got to take it when you see it. You got to take it when you see it. Obviously, it's not a the one that you want to see, but you got to take a deserved win. Got to bank on it. Obviously, you don't want to see Giannis get hurt. Not wishing for that. Uh-oh. Torrey Craig went to lob it to himself and got hurt. Oh, my gosh. That's, that's kind of crazy. Here we go. Coming back here for the fourth quarter as Doc gets interviewed. Again, if you guys are enjoying the stream, if you guys are having fun, why not ask for one last life spike before the stream ends as we get ready for the fourth quarter. Going to add some new uh, graphics in here. I know you guys like the life spike. You guys like the fire. But would you guys like a purge alarm to start the fourth quarter, get ready to hype up for the playoffs? I think it would be nice get everybody ready to go. But don't want it to be too loud and too distracting. Let me know what you guys think. Bobby Portis down low makes the jump shot. Absolutely ridiculous. But as you guys know, we got the drink of the stream. Fresca powered the stream. Not sponsored by. Here we are. Bobby Portis makes a tough mid-range turnaround jump shot. Jalen Brown looking for a three for the first possession for the Boston Celtics. Misses it. Rebound by Bobby Portis. Bugga Bobby. Bugga Bobby. With the rebound. Middleton. Takes the mid-range and makes it. Oh my God. Right when I say we can come back because we're only down 11, the Bucks make their first two shots. Celtics unsuccessful in scoring so far. Only one opportunity taken by the Boston Celtics, but still a little bit of annoying. Jason Tatum trying to dribble. Unfortunately, Luke Cornett setting the screen. Going to get trapped. Good catch by Cornett. Pass it to Pritchard for three. R rolls out. Defensive rebound by Bobby Portis. Middleton, on the sides up here, takes a three, and he makes it in Luke Cornette's face. Oh my God! Baga Bobby, Baga Bobby, yes sir, Baga Bobby, you got them big bagas. Jalen Brown to the rack, big slam from Jalen Brown. But Dwayne, you are right. We have to lock down Bobby Portis. If he's going to do this, he's going to eat us up. He's an X factor for them down low. He's an X factor for him down low. Dwayne says, "Here we go again." Exactly, exactly, my guy. Pat cannot end with the mid range misses. Tatum rebound pass up to Brown. Brown now gonna sit there get double teamed by AJ Green and. Middleton, Tatum's going to call for the screen. Hauser's going to run away. Going to run one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one option on Beasley. Pull the step back on him. He bites for it. Misses. Rebound by Brown. Fake pass to Cornette down low and takes the mid-range jump shot. And makes it. It makes it. Middleton now bringing the ball up. Jalen Brown, 12 points, 8 rebounds, 3 assists. Not the greatest game offensively from Jalen Brown tonight, but a good defensive game as the Celtics get a big steal there. Hauser now going to the rack. Gets a little nice layup. Misses it, unfortunately. AJ Green for three. Misses. Peyton Pritchard's guarding Chris Middleton down low in the post. That's how you know the Celtics don't care. That's how you definitely know the Celtics don't care. He's still on Chris Middleton down low in the post. Jalen Brown's going to help out. Jalen Brown's giving no defense on AJ Green, who takes a wide open shot again. They're just experimenting, they're just having fun. No worries. Nothing to fear here. Bring the bench out. Just wrap this game up. 
I've been feeling that since the second quarter. Wrap it up. Call it. Let's get this game over with. Jason Tatum. Pass out to Hauser. Pass out to Pritchard. Pritchard now going to the rack by a little pump fake. Pass out to Hauser again on the opposite corner. Makes the shot. Sam Hauser. 14 point lead for the Bucks. Pat Cannot going to bug eye Bobby. Bug eye Bobby. Mid range shot off the front rim. Brown with the rebound. And I thought that was going to be a travel. Brown out to Hauser. Hauser goes to set the screen. Tatum on Middleton goes to pass with his left hand on a spin. Loses the ball. Kanan gets it. Pass down to Bob Dubo down low. Blocked by Tatum. Big block. Brown now going to the rack. Going to get fouled and get a charge here. Jalen Brown. And it's a never mind. So Jalen Brown has gone two charging fouls this game. He was set. Absolutely, Bruce. Take a win no matter what, but still, exactly. Got to take the win. It's it's annoying to lose. It's annoying to lose. Don't get me wrong, Ron. I'm, I'm frustrated. I'm pissed off. I don't want to get blown out. I don't want to lose by 16 points. It's, again, very frustrating, but a win we don't necessarily need. I just don't want to see the media people getting mad. Dame only got eight points. Did not know that Dame only got eight points. Yeah, he hasn't been doing good. But guy Bobby's been carrying. And... Middleton makes the layup. Awful call. Exactly. Exactly. Jalen Brown getting these getting these charges is absolutely ridiculous. Middleton and my God, Bobby. Brooke Lopez had like four or five threes. Josh Crampton. Brooke Lopez. Tatum takes the sidestep three and misses. But yeah. Let's see. Let's look at the... You guys can still see that, right? No, you can't. Awesome. I'll go back to this. Why is it like that? No fucking way, bro. Excuse my language, sorry. I'm gonna have to redo it. Dylan Brown makes another basket. Sorry, I'm recentering this as I as I talk. There we go. We've had 14 people in here right now. Almost 400. If you enjoyed the stream, you got a total of 12 likes. Make sure to hit that like button. Bobby Portis, another rebound. Misses it, gets it. All-time net scoring leader, Brooke Lopez. Exactly, exactly. He's a dog. Defensive player of the year finalist last year, Brooke Lopez. A few stops and capitalizing with three straight threes and a couple putbacks. Yep. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. They won't go away. Won't go away offensively, defensively. We have no no solution. Celtics down 14. Six and a half minutes left. They're taking a timeout off of a Jason Tatum turnover. Sorry, I'm messing with my hair. But it's looking like it's a GG's here, ladies and gentlemen. Honestly, in my opinion, it's looking like a GG's here. Take Tatum out. Take Derek White out. Take everybody out. Put the bench in. Let's get everybody going. And then we'll be okay. Get Jalen Brown out there. Get Jalen Brown out there, off of there. Get Tatum out of there. We'll be okay. We have too much turnover, says Luxios. Exactly. The main problems of tonight's game have been the turnovers, which have led to a lot of points for the Milwaukee Bucks. The ability of the Bucks. Turning up from three-point range on fire, 7-9 from three-point range in the first half quarter and dominating from three-point range in the first half when we couldn't excel at that. And having no Al Horford and no Kristaps Porzingis eliminated the Celtics from scoring in the paint, but also eliminated Giannis Antetokounmpo and Brooke Lopez's an ability to score at the paint because they've just been dominating and feasting down low. T-Snizzle says, not going to lie, I got school tomorrow. I'm tired. I'm going to go to bed. Nice stream. T-Snizzle, no worries, my dude. Have a great night. Thank you for tuning out to the stream. We appreciate you for hanging out here as always. We know you always tune in. Appreciate you hanging out here. Have a good night. Best of luck tomorrow.
Where is the fierce determination and utter resolve? Come on, Ron. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. But, again, tonight is a game where we have the first seed locked up. They're experimenting. They're just having fun. We've seen no double big lineup to stop any of these guys. So, we've seen Hauser guarding Giannis, Peyton Pritchard guarding Giannis, Tillman guarding Malik Beasley. It's just to see if these guys like Tillman, if these guys like Hauser, if these guys like Cornette can stand up to some of these beefer guys like Giannis or Brook Lopez if we run into them in the playoffs or if we're going to need as much uh, Al Horford and Chris Asperzingas as we think. No rebounding as well as so Dwayne for sure. Defensive rebounding has been atrocious for the Boston Celtics. Haven't been able to stop the Milwaukee Bucks from doing that. And again, it, that goes to having no Al and no KP. You know what I mean? Just not having those guys, not having those paint presences versus a very strong and physical Milwaukee Bucks team. Let's not forget that minus Damian Lillard, this team is very physical play and a lot of scoring at the basket, a lot of use with their big men, with Brooke Lopez, with Bobby Portis, with Giannis Antetokounmpo. Chris Middleton and Damian Lillard are their sh shooters, but their main offense and main way of scoring is driving to the paint and scoring at the rim. So that's what it is. Dwayne says, I'm getting old. It's about time for me to go to bed too. No, I know what you, I know what you mean, man. I know what you mean. Luckily tonight, I'm not going to lie to you, it's only, it's only 9.30 for a Celtics game getting close to an end, which is... Totally not that bad. Usually you see at 7.30 game time, Celtics game go to 10, 10.30. So hopefully we, we get off the earlier end tonight and it's a good night tonight. But Dwayne, it's a great show tonight. See you next time. Thank you, Dwayne, for tuning in. We'll be live again versus the New York Knicks on Thursday. So I hope to catch you there. Thank you for always being in the streams. Thank you for calling on the videos, man. You're a real MVP. We appreciate you. Payne Pritchard missed three as we're back. And Ron says, put the bench in and let them win. Exactly. We got the bench going. Sfee. Pritchard, Brissett, Cornette, and Hauser tonight. Since Xavier Tillman got the start, he's not going to be seeing these extended minutes at the end of the game. But let us know your thoughts and down below what you guys feel as Damian Lewis misses the three. Cornette goes for the tip rebound, lands in Beverly's lap, which leads to him to meet Beasley three, who he makes it. Pritchard pass. To my high look back to Brissett down low. Nobody on him. Easy basket for Brissett there. Good take by O'Shea. Brissett. And like I mentioned, difficult night tonight. Not the night that we want to see. But some things that we learned were that we need Al. We need KP when going up against a physical team like the Bucks. We're going to need them in a physical series. Guys like Tillman and guys like Cornette can't help out but aren't the for sure. Lock Porter scores over Brissett easily. Charles Miller says, what's up, Charles? How we doing? Hope you had a great night tonight. He says, this is what happens when they don't care. My wife liked to hear her name on the internet. Glad that she liked that, Charles Miller's wife. I don't know if you're with your wife or if you're at work, but again, shout out to her for being a fantastic supporter of this channel, being a fantastic supporter of you, Charles, who's a fantastic supporter here. Peyton Pritchard makes the three, but again, this matchup, did we need this game? No. Would we like to see a win? Yes. Would we like to see a closer matchup? Yes. Are we going to hear a lot of back talk about the Boston Celtics on ESPN and on Twitter in the next 24 hours? For sure. Be prepared. My fingers are going to be ready to go defending our squad. But again, nothing to worry, Rear. Nothing to worry about. I feel like I've been repeating myself most of the night. Patrick Beverly makes a basket. Does this too small on Luke Cornett again? Like, what are you doing? Like, you know Peyton Pritchard doesn't like that. Misses the three. Just... A sad performance tonight, unfortunately. Just, just utter disappointment tonight. An utter disappointment. But like I said, if you enjoy the stream, if you enjoyed hanging out here tonight, make sure to hit that like button as we try to get to 4,000 subscribers. We're at currently, let me check, 3,739, actually doing pretty solid on the YouTube 
grind the last kid. Okay, so again, that goes to you guys. Shout out to everybody who's hit that subscribe button. As Fima Hailuk makes a tough basket. But again, shout out to everybody for tuning into the stream, hitting that like button, hanging out, having a good time. And we've been having a good one. We've been hanging out, even though we haven't had a fantastic finish for the Celtics. It's been a good time. We saw some good plays from Tatum. Saw some good plays from Brown a little bit on some big slams. As Damian Lillard makes a basket on Brissette. What I meant was put the bench in and let them beat Milwaukee Bucks. Yeah. Let the bench go to work. Hauser takes a three, makes it. 15-point game. Charles Murrow says, at work this Sunday will be home. No worries, Charles. Tell your wife I gave her another shout out. She wants to hear it again and scroll to the part of the live stream around probably like two hours and she can hear it again. Brooke Lopez, though, passing around. Beverly gets to the rack, misses. Beverly doing the too small thing is really annoying as well. Pritchard out to Mahai Luke. Mahai Luke to Pritchard. Pritchard with three. We're just chucking more threes. Miss good board by Brissett. Fighting for that shot. Going to go up for it. Not going to get a foul call. Going to get a foul call on him. <laughs> That's ridiculous. That's been this game. Why are we taking a timeout? What are we doing? Just end the game, man. The game is over. Why are we taking timeouts? Why are we going to commercial breaks? Just end the game no one wants to watch this anymore we're down 15 points it's absolutely over just end it end it end it end it it's over let the game run out just it's, it's done it's done ron says yep i can hear Shaq now saying the subjects are trash exactly and i would just warn you guys if you have X, if you have Twitter, whatever you have, tonight it's going to be a heyday. I'm letting you all know right now. If you have X, you have Twitter, if you have any social media, just stay away, turn off. I myself have gotten into arguments with the Boston Celtics. It's not worth our breath. It's not worth our time. It's not worth the aggravation that we get from typing those rampy, you know, rage-filled texts. The Heat pages, the Bucks pages... Possibly the Sixers and the Knicks pages are even going to come out tonight, hating on us. We have the first seed locked up. The Bucks are going to have to play a strong team as well. So, we'll be okay. We'll be okay. Ron says, you said, sorry, forget to click the like button. No worries. Again, appreciate everybody that does click the like button. Thank you for tuning in and hitting that like button, Ron, so we can get more people in the stream as it windows down. Like I mentioned, this is a community. We want to build stuff over here on Celtics Digest. So, if you enjoy the streams... I know that there's some other people that do some watch-along streams, but if you enjoy the energy, if you enjoy hanging out here, having fun with us here over on Celtics Digest, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button like Ron just did, and join the community as we try to get to 4,000 subscribers. If you scroll all the way up into the chat, the first text in this chat, I'll even repost it right here right now so you can get it going again. But here is the link for the Discord. So if you guys just saw it, click the link in the Discord. You guys can be a member of the Digest Media Discord, which allows you to talk to me about the Boston Celtics, have more in-depth conversations about the team, have interactions with Celtics fans, and have you know more conversations with them. You can leave things that you think in the comment section. Drop your thoughts in the Discord. Let the other fans react. Let myself react. We can have some conversations back and forth. It's always a great time to have some interactions. And also, we have to look at, you know, the other things as well, like um, <clears throat> uh, doing the talk along live streams, the radio call on live streams. That's what we're going to be doing when we start the Discord. So if you want to be part of that, join the Discord so that you can be the first person in line, one of the first people in line, the first people to try that out. Should be very, very exciting. We're going to want to start those before the playoffs. Going to get those every single week during the Celtics regular season, during the season playoffs. And during the offseason, we're going to be doing those radio call-ins. So, again, some of the times it might be 30 minutes, depending on the people who have. Sometimes it might be an hour, two hours. If I have even more time, you know, if I schedule some time off on a Friday or Thursday night, and we have, you know, three or four hours, and you guys want to keep calling, you guys want to have some fun discussing the squad, we can keep going back and forth. It's all up to you guys, like I mentioned. 
You guys are the engine that fuels the channel. I can show up to work every day. I can produce all the content. I can give it out to everybody. And yes, I'll still enjoy my job. I'll still have a fun time doing it. Without your guys' support, without your guys' interactions, without your guys' comments, without your guys' thoughts, the channel doesn't get pushed to other people. It doesn't get that recognition. You guys don't get that commodity of feeling like a great community. So we need that interaction from you guys, not from just myself, but also from you guys as well so that we can have a fantastic community here. The Real Daryl is here. What's up, The Real Daryl? How you doing tonight? He says that anybody flipping out over this game is wrong. Boston deserves to cut their starters minutes and play lineups to the end of the season. Let's go get Banner 18. Exactly. We saw with Joe Missoula in that Oklahoma City Thunder game. He said that we're going to be resting some guys. We're going to be showing some different lineups to get up the end of the season. We saw um, on Sunday and Friday we play the Wizards and the Hornets. I don't expect big matchups versus them. Tonight, Tillman and Cornette both played that center role for no Cal Horford, no Kristaps Porzingis, but they didn't play it together. We saw Hauser guarding the center at some times, Tatum playing the five, Pritchard guarding Giannis. They're experimenting with a lot of different things tonight as we wind up the end of this game here. So I am not worried at all. Sorry, we've just been going on a rant really talking for the last couple of minutes. It's a minute and a half left. Celtics are down almost 15 points. The Bucks are basically dribbling out the ball, having some fun. I'm not worried, though. I think we'll be a okay. I fixed that, LOL. Can't risk injury point blank. Look what happened with Giannis. Exactly. Can't have one of those injuries happen on Sunday. Don't expect any of the starters to play Friday when Grant comes back to Boston. Don't expect any of the starters to play. Maybe on Thursday versus the Knicks, they'll want to run some guys. But with the Knicks having some injuries as well, maybe that's another key day to rest. We'll have to wait and see. This could have been, you know, the not last full day with no injuries, but one of the last couple of days with a lot of guys still playing. Celtics have not attempted a single free throw tonight. Exactly the real Daryl. They got zero free throw calls. Absolutely ridiculous. Patrick Beverly, sit down. What are you doing going like this? Top, sorry to cut myself off, but do it like, like, what are you doing to, oh, uh, like, buddy. He's talking to Damian Lillard. Buddy, stop. Stop. You're not doing anything. You're going home in the first or second round. Stop. One more last run to cut the lead exactly. Going on a little bit of a heat streak here. You can see that the game ended on the NBA app, but not on my final screen. Let's watch this last shot for the Celtics. Payne Pritchard passed to Luke Cornett. Great pass. Great slam by Cornett as well. Take the score down to double digits. Unfortunately, not able to do that. As we fall 104 to 91 here to the Milwaukee Bucks. Gonna have to check out a little Giannis Antetokounmpo because that's gonna be a key thing for the Bucks here. They lost him off a non -cat contract contact injury, excuse me, and it did not look great. Had to be helped out by some of his teammates and staff members. Again, not the night you want to see tonight from the Celtics. A 15 point loss to the Milwaukee Bucks, not pleasant. Especially on national television, especially after getting blown out on TNT last game. It's not what you want to see. But the Celtics, 14-game lead over the Milwaukee Bucks. As the Bucks are, you know, competing for that two-seed tonight. It may have just locked them in as that two-seed. We'll have to wait and see as the season gets closer and closer to an end. But if they have no Giannis Antetokounmpo, they run into a Miami. They run into a uh, Indiana. They run into an Philly. They might have some problems coming up their sleeves here over the next couple weeks. So, Boston Celtics fans, do not fear the Milwaukee Bucks, because they have to get to the Eastern Conference Finals first. And so do we, obviously. We might have a tough road coming up ahead of us as well. But I'm believing in this squad. I am not falling asleep. We got Drew Holiday talking into Antetokounmpo's brother. Thanasis having a good laugh here. Dapping each other up. Looked like they were going to get in a fight, but now they're laughing. I, I don't know. Patrick Beverly is getting the interview at the end of the game. Of course, TNT wants his big mouth. Spewing. I bet you will find some quotes here at the end of the game. But like I mentioned, shout out to everybody that's been in the stream. At the moment, we have 18 people currently hanging out with us, even though the game just ended. We had a total of 425 people check out the stream and a total of 13 likes, which is absolutely fantastic for this two-hour stream. Like I mentioned, can't appreciate everybody who hits that like button, who supports. If you watch this stream for five minutes two to three minutes, or if you've been here since the beginning. I know people like Dwayne and T. Snizzle were here in the chat. They unfortunately left. They went to bed. But the thought of you guys being here, the effort that you guys give it in the chat, everybody communicating, everybody having fun is just absolutely fantastic. Thank you for everybody tuning in tonight. I appreciate every single one of you. 
for watching. If you watched one minute, if you stayed the whole time, again, thank you. We do these live watch-alongs every single Boston Celtics game, so make sure if you want to stay tuned, if you like the energy, if you like this place, stay tuned because this is the place for you. We want to build a fantastic Celtics community. We got the Discord pinned down below. We got the Twitter in our description if you want to follow the other Celtics Digest media spots. Like I mentioned, we're going to be doing these live streams throughout the regular season as it wraps up in this last couple of weeks. And gearing up for the playoffs, we're going to be doing them as well having fun with all these, you know, little emoticons and stuff like that. So if you guys enjoy that, if you guys want to, you know, power the fun of the stream, we appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for tuning into tonight's stream. Unfortunately, like we mentioned, the Celtics did lose by 15 points, but to a Bucks squad and a win that we necessarily did not need. The Celtics gear up to take on the Knicks on Thursday for their last road game of the season. They'll then take on Charlotte on Friday and Washington on Sunday to wrap up the regular season. We will be live again on Thursday versus the New York Knicks for another watch along live stream. So if you guys feel interested, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, make sure to stay tuned into that as well. Stay tuned to the videos. We just did a video talking about Namus Keda. So if you missed that and want to hear about how he can be impactful for this 15th man roster spot, check that out as well. We'll get to the last at the end of the comments here. Ron says, not the end of the world. Sucks to see them play high school level ball, LOL. Exactly. Sucks to see them not play the greatest on offense. Little lackluster on defense. But again, no KP, no Al, no one to stop their interior presence. It's A-OK. -okay. I think we'll be fine. Charles spamming them sharing rocks as always and saying great show. See you later. Thank you, Charles. Thank you for tuning in. As always, appreciate you always being here. Like I mentioned, shout out to everybody that hit that like button. Shout out to everybody that tuned into the stream. And we'll be doing another live watch along on Thursday versus the New York Knicks, which will be an exciting one. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. A fortunate result for the Boston Celtics tonight. Not the result that we wanted, but we'll be A-OK. -okay. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I'll catch you guys in the next video or the next stream. Go Boston Celtics. Have a great night.